I'm Dorita Chang, and um, I currently um, I'm an assistant professor um, at the University of Hong Kong, and um, I'm also currently the program director of our undergraduate neuroscience uh, program, which is actually a uh, about a four year, a three to three year old program. Um, and my main research interest um, is in the visual neurosciences. So I spend um, all of my energy trying to understand the, the, the functioning of our visual system um, using a lot of different a lot of different techniques, primarily a lot of neuroimaging, uh, uh, fMRI work, um, um, MEG work, which is just a spin on neuroimaging. Um, of course, we do some behavior that we combine with all this, this imaging data. Um, and, and recently we're going, we're, we're doing some biochemistry measurements with spectroscopy. We're doing, you know, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff. We do brain stimulation. So, so a lot of different neuroscience, cool things. You know, that's a really, really um, big question. And, and the answer usually surprises um, all of my students. Um, so in fact, when I entered, I mean, we don't need to go back to when I was young, but <laughs> but as in you know, um, whenever whenever you know, grade school, high school, secondary, whatever. So 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 when I entered university, um, I entered as a um, as a science student um, who thought, and and that's why, and that's what ended up happening was I declared a biology major um, with a uh, genetics concentration and. Um, and it's an interesting story there because, of course, as in any uh, undergraduate program, you have some free credits to do electives. And with those electives, was I took some psychology courses, but not like, not like psychology courses, but they were like all brain and behavior. And then all like there was, I, I remember there was one course on visual neuroscience that was that was the first the first thing that happened to me <laughs> that I found really fascinating. And then I ended up taking with my other electives, like some of these like neuro, I think it was like a, I forget exactly the name, but it was something on neurochemistry and neurotransmitters. I found that really cool. Then I took like a lab course where we got to, got to like slice open sheep brains. And, and so I think you can, you can see where I'm going here, but my electives sort of became more interesting <laughs> than, than my core, um, than my core biology, um, stuff that was happening like it was it was so tedious for me I, I think I, I I don't know if we have any anyone intending on you know doing a major in biology later but I'm sorry I hope I don't offend you but I found it very boring um like my you know I don't know if it was the hour that like you know the 8 30 biology classes or it was like the stupid organic chemistry course suffering <laughs> through physics of all sorts and um, calculus and it it wasn't it wasn't um it was tedious and it wasn't the, the interest kind of started diverging towards brain and behavior and, and neuroscience stuff. And, and so in my third year, which is quite late, in my third year, I changed my major. <laughs> and it's, it is late and I suffered um, for that by taking um, taking summer school. It's not so common here in Hong Kong, at least in Hong Kong U, but um, uh, summer um, summer summer course credits with, with the equivalent classes um, we, 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 could, we could take. Um, to kind of, uh, you know, graduate on time. Of course, my parents were going to kill me if I, if, I, <laughs> if I needed a fifth year or something just because I changed my major. I graduated on time. And, um, and so that's how my interest started in kind of like the, the neurosciences, understanding the brain and behavior. And vision part specifically, what happened was in my fourth year, um, I got to do some lab work with my undergraduate, like it's like capstone thesis stuff that you guys think about. And I ended up doing it with a, um, a, a professor who was um, doing visual development. And um, I know, I know it sounds funny to say this, you know, so many years later, but I think that capstone experience was probably my most kind of life-changing experience. <laughs> that's sort of why I got so interested and I got, you know, and, and that's, you know, how by, by, by that time I decided, okay, I think grad school is next for me and then no to be in a vision lab. And then, and then that sort of just snowballed into a career in, in, in vision work. But yeah, so, but, but by no means did I grow up liking vision, liking neuroscience. No, I mean, I think, it, and it's one of these things that you guys will learn as well. I think just you, you won't know you like it or not until you start doing it. Work both, both ways to just 
as much as I thought genetics and biotechnology was going to be so cool. And I started studying it and I just hated it. So, um, so I'll, I'll get a tea from a, like, if I could take myself back to that year where obviously I don't know nearly as much as I do now, it was actually a behavior um, only lab. They didn't do any like neuroimaging stuff, but, but, but the idea was that we were going to um, chart through, I mean, we couldn't chart through the entire lifespan, but through, through a short period of lifespan, how, um, um, like inhibitory mechanisms were a little bit different in children than than um, you know um, than than in adults. And I, I remember there was you know I don't, don't want to go to too many boring details, but there are a lot of things you can do in a visual stimulus to mimic, for example, the receptive field of a neuron, or to mimic. Okay, you know if we make if we assume the neuron is paying attention to this spotlight, right, and we um, you know make this surrounding ring carry some content that is different from the inner inner part of the mm -hmm. ring, then maybe we can make some hypotheses about, okay, if they have very strong inhibitory mechanisms, maybe that content in the surrounding ring will be uh, distracting for them in the middle, or maybe it'll be facilita uh, facilitating. So, so, so principles like that, that are obviously based on uh, physiology data, based on neuroscience data. But then what was really cool was that we could use, sure it was only behavior, but we could use behavior to make really cool inferences about brain mechanisms. And it's, it's a really good place to start, obviously, definitely for an undergrad who, you know, is still just starting to get into sciences, but just to understand why do we do these things? And what is the link between what we have up here um, as a stimulus on the screen to these subjects, um, to literature, and then to rounding about when I have my data, how do I make those inferences back to what it means for yeah. seven-year-old child's brain versus you know an 18-year-old adult's brain. And so I, I, I felt that, um, that that was sort of why it was so life-changing. was suddenly realizing, oh, hey, um, this kind of, puzzle solving and this uh, story making from your behavior data actually um, is a lot of fun.